Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and I make videos about my life as an Orthodox Jew. Today, you're gonna see a video about me getting ready for Shabbat or as we call it Erev Shabbat in school. It's the last Shabbat of the semester. So sad I only have one more left, which is crazy. I love Erev Shabbat at school. It's so fun. Most of my time in college, I actually don't think I've had classes on Fridays. And if I do have class, like one class in one hour, it's not that bad. But this semester, thank God, no class on Friday. And it's just like, really fun. I just, I love Arab Shabbat at school. Okay, I realize there's a glare from my glasses. Basically, the Rav, Rav Yosef Soloveitchik, talks about how someone isn't, I'm just gonna read the quote. The true mark of a pious Jew is not that he or she is a Shomer Shabbat, aka Sabbath observant, but a Shomer Arab Shabbat, one who's properly prepared on the eve of Sabbath. And technically, Halacha talks about how you can start preparing for Shabbat on Wednesday, slash you should start preparing. There's a whole beautiful ideas that I'm happy to link at the bottom. I try really hard to make my preparation for Shabbat meaningful because then it'll make Shabbat more meaningful. So let's get into it. As you can see, I started off my morning by taking a shower. My hair takes a while to dry and it's cold outside. So I just decided to do it first thing in the morning, then getting on to getting ready for the rest of the day. Next, I went downstairs and ritually washed my hands before I started to dive in. I just got back from checking the A-roof, basically, in short, um, one of the prohibitions of Shabbat is that we can't carry in, from a private domain into a public domain and vice versa. So we have this thing called an A roof to make the whole area a private domain. So thank God my school has a really big A roof and it needs to be checked every week. There are different parts of the A roof that look differently. So the part that I am checking this semester is like fishing wire that's attached to light poles. And we just check to make sure that it's up. Part of an A roof is having that like surrounding structure. So very often it takes the form of a fishing pole. And then there's also like a food aspect involved. So at the Jewish center that maintains the A roof, they have a box of matzah and they say a blessing on it every year and they change out the matzah to make it one communal area. So I just checked that with a friend. I didn't take videos because I was driving and my friend and I were just catching up because we haven't seen each other in a while. But it really takes like 20 minutes, um, depending on your section. Actually, most sections from start to finish, door to door is 20 minutes. So it's really easy. And now I'm gonna make soup. Okay, so it's not Friday, it's Sunday and it's snowing. I just want you to see what the A-roof looked like because you can actually see it really clearly now that there's snow on it. It's literally just fishing pole, a uh, fishing wire. I'm assuming people probably think it's a like cable wire, but no, this this is the A roof. Sometimes it's harder to see, but the snow makes it really easy. So see right there. I figured it was a cool opportunity to show you. So this is where my section of the A roof starts. You see how it kind of moves. That's just the shape of it and how it was designed. I'm hosting a soup festival Oneg. So basically I got five of my friends slash their houses to make soup. And then tonight after dinner, we're all gonna come back to my house, eat even more because Jews don't like eating on an empty stomach and just hang out. So I am making zucchini soup. I started off with dicing some onions and letting them caramelize. I let them do their thing for a bit. While those were caramelizing, I pressed some tofu so that I could make myself lunch. Then once the onions were nice and caramelized, I added zucchini, then covered that with water, let it sit for a bit and ran out to do an errand. So for my job, I needed to go get fingerprinted because I'll be working around kids and that's just the law. Fine, not a big deal. I go to the place. There's, wait, literally, I just got my fingerprints on. It took four minutes. There was a wait, no reason. The guy was so rude, unnecessary. Um, and then I don't know why in my mind it would be like the ink that would be like on my fingers forever, but it was like technology, which makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I didn't think that. While I was out, the soup was on a low simmer and now it is time to use the immersion blender and what we Jews call zhuzhing the soup. I wanted to make labels before Shabbos of all the different types of soup that I'm having. So as you see, I have butternut squash, meat mushroom barley, cauliflower, zucchini, miso, and beef lentil. Next, I cleaned my room a bit and started with making my bed. I actually usually make my bed right when I get up. A fun fact is that in middle school, if I didn't make my bed, I would not get a ride to school. So I'm very good at making my bed, but I was just in a rush this morning, didn't have time. So I'm doing that now. And I feel like if your bed's not made, then your room is just never gonna look clean. Next, I did a little sweeping, which honestly, I don't do nearly as much as I should, but oh well. And especially with the end of the semester, I wanted to leave my room clean for when I come back at the beginning of next semester. So more specifically Shabbat chores, I filled up my hot water urn so that way we can have hot tea and hot coffee on Shabbos. The hot water urn I got from Amazing Savings in Teaneck. It's really awesome. It has three different settings for weekday Shabbat and Yom Tov. So I just 
turn it on, let it boil, and then turn it to Shabbat mode. I removed everything that was on the counter so we would have room for the crock pots that are going to be holding the soups to keep them warm and just cleaned up the counters a bit. Since we will be having a lot of people over this Shabbos, I wanted to make the house look really nice, so I did some vacuuming. Putting in my contacts, and then I'm gonna do my makeup. I'll show you what I'm using. I'm really not much of a makeup person. Like day to day, I don't really wear that much makeup. Sometimes if I really look tired, I'll wear mascara, but that's it. And a lot of this makeup, I got either like hand-me-down for my sister or my sister told me to buy it. So. We're using this. Nicole, if this is yours, you can't take it from me. You left it at home, it means it's mine. So I'm gonna, I really just do eyeshadow, eyeliner, and mascara. So I'll start with this primer that my sister told me to get a while ago. I don't know what direction. This one, I'm not, like, I don't know what to do. I only know sort of kind of how to do makeup because I did theater for a very long time. And that's it. So we're putting this on. And pretty much it's two and candle lighting is 415, 414, something like that. But a Chabad couple in the community just had a baby yesterday, Wednesday night, something like that. Um, so I offered to go help out with the kids. So they, I'm coming right before Shabbos. So I'm getting ready now and then I'll have a little bit of time. Okay, so I need a brush. I have this brush. I don't know where it's from, but it exists. And then... I just do some sort of combination. It's no, there's no science. In terms of makeup on Shabbos, everyone does things differently um, within the parameters of halacha. So personally, I just do my makeup before and keep it on. Um, even before like two or three day holidays, I just do my makeup and hope for the best. Um, Usually it like sort of kind of stays on and if not, like whatever, not a big deal. Um, there are, there is a way to put on makeup on Shabbos that is in accordance with halacha. Um, there's like special makeup and ways you put it on. Um, I think that's too much work and I'm not that into makeup. Like I don't really do anything on my face. It's really just my eyes and it stays. So Shabbos makeup is a thing. I just don't use it because I just think my method is easier. This is my Friday night look. I recently got it, a family friend was giving away clothes, so I took it, so I don't know where it's from. And then I'm wearing these red tights. I want it to be cool. You kind of can't see it, so let me show you up close. And then these shoes I've had since high school. I think I got them on Zappos. Thank you so much for watching this video. I don't know if it was able to convey, again, how much I love getting ready for Shabbat. Even like this Shabbat, I think candle lighting was like 414. Crazy, super early, but even still, it was really fun. And I, I, I think I mentioned this, I actually turned off my phone at three and I went to go help babysit for a Chabad couple in our community that just had a baby Wednesday night. So I got there around three and left around candle lighting and helped the kids get ready for Shabbos, all that stuff, getting dressed, whatever. And then them getting the call from their dad that they're 15 minutes away, like him, the mom, the baby are 15 minutes away from the house. The kids were so excited. Okay, this is the ninth child in the family. All the kids were so excited, looking out the front window, waiting her mom and baby to come home then when they finally did come home like so excited it was really a special moment definitely a different Arab Shabbat than I usually have but, like very very special and I'm very happy that I had that I had that memory because it was very sweet anyway hope you have a great week thanks for watching bye